I noticed you. I was coming to your department. I noticed that uh, uh, I noticed you was already sitting down and I already had been trained. So uh, when I got there, of course, I had to go through the training, and then I got a chance to uh, to talk to you a couple of times. And uh, and uh, I was very curious about uh, the kind of person, uh, uh, the kind of person you were, and and how different it seems uh, in a place like that. And uh, and uh, we just. Uh, then we just, uh, you know, became friends, and I and I enjoy, you know, our friendship now. Well, during that time, uh, I was asking myself, uh, "What's a man?" Uh, growing up from uh, a boy not knowing his father, uh, not seeing what a really a real man was, and and not seeing the place that a real man stands, I want to know what a, a man was. I know everything that I was. Uh, been introduced to a scene wasn't was in a man's body but not necessarily a man and then one day uh, the question came to me about uh, what's a man uh, for some reason uh, on my little part-time job I was when I, I was going home and uh, uh, the lady asked before I left that uh, she asked me a question to say that a grown man couldn't pay his bill so that evening I, I it just stuck with me about what's a man uh, because you're 18 years old, does that make you a man? Uh, because uh, because you can have children, does that make you a man? Uh, or could, is it because you can pay bills, does that make you a man? Well, uh, you know, gay men have kids, and, and women pay bills. So I knew that it was a little more than that to be a man. Uh, so I I prayed to God and asked, what, a, what was a man? And the next morning, I remember waking up and having the answer, and not not really knowing how I got the answer, but it was uh, in a dream. Uh, he told me what the answer was. So I rushed back to work to tell the lady that I was working with uh, what I've learned. And uh, I told her that God told me what a man was. And, and when I told her, uh, she said that, uh, that that's absolutely correct. And God told me that a man uh, is an adult male that has taken the commandments of God and living by the best of his ability. And since he told me that, I was never able, I mean, it's been years now, and I still, I still remember the same words. An adult male that has taken the commandments of God and is trying to live by them by the best of his ability. And I think if you do that, you will become the man that God made. Well, when I grew up, it was uh, there was me and my two other brothers, and we lived with my stepfather. And so we was told every day we weren't going to make it. You're not going to make it. You're not going to be nothing. You're not ever going to make it. And when you're told that as a child, either you're going to accept that or you are going to uh, fight against that. And I guess uh, I worked very hard to make that, uh, that statement a lie uh, to my life. And I use uh, the negative uh, things that was done to me uh, as strength to keep moving forward. And I always wanted to be a better man than he was. So if really, <clears throat> I need to thank him for doing it in my life because it caused me to do the, the opposite. And uh, now I just want to be the best man I can possibly be. And uh, when, you, when you try to be the best man you can possibly be, you will find out that you cannot be that man without God. So uh, as I uh, learn more about God, I learn more about myself, uh, which, uh, which, uh, which goes together because the better uh, you know God, uh, the better man you are. Uh, most of all, if you grew up without your father, uh, you can make it. You will make it. I used to uh, say as I drove my car, uh, I will make it, I will survive, I will stay alive. You have to believe first. And then you, uh, of course boys, uh, as well as men, needs people, positive people in their lives, so they can run their ideas by, so they can see if their thinking uh, is in line with, uh, with, with God's way of life. Uh, and when I started off 
It wasn't really a lot about God when I started off. It was a lot about trying to find who I was and what a man was. And I just noticed that through life, through life, I noticed that God has the answers. You see, you can ask your neighbor what a man is if you want to. I mean, he probably are taken by surprise because most men have not asked themselves what a man is. Uh, it's not until they look in the mirror and they come to them to ask themselves what a man is. Uh, then they're going to start seeking the answer. And then once they find out the answer, they'll see how far they are from being a real man. A real man is, is, a real man is equipped to handle everything in this world. He's equipped to handle problems. He's equipped to love. He's equipped to protect. He's equipped to solve problems. A real man, God has given him everything he needs to do what he's supposed to do. It's just the problem is most boys and most young men don't know what a man is. They had no example. They read no book. So sometimes ladies expect them to be something that they have no idea what it is. All they know is they're in the costume of a man. Uh, being a man is more than what you see on the outside. What you see on the outside doesn't make him a man. It's what's on the inside that makes him a man. So, to know a man is you're going to, if you gonna, when you meet a man, you're going to know because of his actions, the way he carries himself, uh, how he speaks, uh, and, and it goes further from there. Well, the law, the law, uh, of course we have one law and that we all have to abide by, but the law doesn't consider where you grew up at. A law doesn't consider a boy with no father, a boy with no mother, where he learns from the streets. The law doesn't consider that you didn't have a chance or you didn't have a talk with a man or a woman to even know uh, what street or what avenue you should take. So uh, when I went to the jury and they wanted to try this boy for life, and he was only 17. Uh, I felt an injustice because they don't know where that boy came from. Uh, that boy had one bad day and they wanted to give him life in the penitentiary. Uh, I just think that uh, there is no justice really. There's no laws that really protect low income people uh, because they don't know the struggles of a low income family. But the boys are so lost. Uh, when there's no father there, they have no one to talk to. They have no one to live, to copy. So what they do is they go in the street and copy what they see in the street. Uh, so uh, uh, we need, the boys need to have uh, a role model. The boys need to have other men around them so they can know what a man acts like and what a man looks like. Uh, and that's what we are feeling. I think it's very important because, again, when you're a boy, you're trying to copy something and there's no man to copy. So you copy the street and you start acting like the street. And when we met, I told you that you, was, you were unique and it was in a good way because everybody else copied the street. But you were who you were, you see. When everybody leaves home, they are a copy of their neighborhood, of how they grew up in. Then later on in life, they have to find their way back to who God really made them to be. Hmm. So a lot of the people you're looking at is a copy from that neighborhood. They're not who God wants them to be. And they're trying to find their way back to who that person really, really is. Most people don't know who they are. They are, and they feel like that neighborhood. But now the neighborhood, and that's over with, they're having trouble finding out who they really are what's right, what's wrong, what's a man supposed to be like, what is respect, what is, what is disrespect. Uh, all those questions are coming up now in their lives. Of course, they should have been answered in the teenage lives. Now you're 30, 40, 50 trying to figure out those answers today. It's very hard to find a mentor. Sometimes it's in an uncle, sometimes it's in a cousin, sometimes it's God sent people in your life that will pass by and give you advice or give you something to look at until you can go to the next person. Uh, and that's what it was in my life. Uh, what would I say for a boy that's growing up without his father? Uh, be who you are. 
understand what everybody else is doing, the style, the, 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 the shoes everybody wearing, but don't be the clothes, be the person God made you to be. I think it's very important that a boy finds out who he is. And when I met you, it was different because you might have felt strange, but you were, you were one of the few people that dared to be who he really is in God. And you don't see many real people. What you see is a copy of the street. What you see, that's why everybody, all the kids are, are sagging pants. That's a copy, you see. That's why you see the glasses, the shirt, the way I work, dress. And now I'm trying to tailor my personality to that, but that's not really me. A lot of the people that go to the penitentiary, and the reason they go is not really them, but they're trying to find something to copy, something they think is cool. But in all the time, they're looking for themselves. Well, drugs was all around me. The use of drugs, selling of drugs, they was all around me. But I was always a step slow from doing what everybody was doing. And I got teased for that. But now that I look back, I'm glad that I was a step slow. Because I was able to see what crack does to people. I was glad that I was a step slow because I was able to see what cocaine did to people. And that has really g gave me a chance to step back and look at what direction I want to go in when I went to the left and seen the cocaine and when I went to the right and seen the crack that I, know, I knew to keep, keep walking straight. And that's not what I wanted to be. So it's a lot of peer pressure, but I'm just a living testimony that a boy with no father a boy with nobody to call, a boy that has no money, can make it out. Still, if you are trying to be the best man that you can be, uh, it goes way past what you see. Uh, the best man, uh, being a man, has everything to do with what's inside of you and not what's outside of you. If you change what's on the inside, the outside is going to show. If you know the value, if you only knew the value of being a man, a real man, then all the little boys would want to be one. Uh, they just have nothing to copy. They have nothing to, to, to they have no uh, picture of one because, uh, of course, the human body of a man picture is not a man, actually. It's what's inside. So you really can't show them a picture of it. Uh, to mentor boys, you have to show them an action of what a man is. Not just what the outside of him look like, but more importantly, what's on the inside of him. Being a man about everything, there's no reason to lie. If you're a man, you're a man. So if you're going to be a man, then be a man about what you say. Be a man about your word. Be a man about what you do in every way acknowledge God because he's the author and the finisher of you and understand that there's no reason to be nobody else be as real as you can be uh, one of my best friends is reality reality is what it is now you can look the other way and fake and shake like you don't see what reality is but reality is reality be friends with reality, because reality can, can help you grow. See, the, the title of man is the highest title in the land. There is no title on earth higher than man. Now, you can be the President of the United States, but you still got to be a man. You can be the CEO of a company, but you still got to be the man. Understand that man was named by God. That's the only creature that was named by God man. So your title is pretty high and you have to understand that that comes with a lot of responsibility. Right? Man, that comes with a lot of responsibility. So I think it's everybody, everybody should be trying to figure out, okay, God called me man. What is that? You are equipped to handle everything that comes before you. Protects your, your, you're equipped to protect your family. You're equipped to handle every problem. Uh, what I had to learn more about 
uh, you know, growing up with brothers and no sisters is how to be patient, how to be humble. In my neighborhood, the humble didn't live because if you were humble, you got chased home every day. But as a man now, when you pass that era in your life, you have to understand that you have to be humble now. It's very important that humbleness is part of your character because that is a part of you and who you or who you are. But it's very important that you find out who you are and find out what you are. And it's very important to have that talk with yourself and you look in the mirror yourself and ask the question, what's a man?